Welcome to hour number two on a Friday on Hashtag Daily K with your host, Peter Bint. How much do you know about K food? How much hanshik have you eaten? We invite you into the world of Korean food, of course, including the history and culture of it. We'll introduce trendy foods and famous restaurants on Dish of the Day with Chef Ryan. It is a Friday. It's all about the food on Dish of the Day with Chef Ryan. Today in his chef... Can I call those... Because we sometimes say Chef Whites, don't we? Are those Chef Blacks? I should be wearing whites, but I do so much barbecue and grilling, you know, the black is is handy. Oh, I wonder, why do chefs traditionally wear white? Because surely, even in a regular kitchen without the barbecue, you're going to spill things on there. It's going to get filthy. Well, yeah, but it's to prove your cleanliness. Oh, okay. But doesn't that that headache, having to wash that all the time? You wouldn't guess how many many chef coats I have had to return. Tire because you just can't get the stains out. You yeah, know? that yeah. seems ridiculous. All right, so many, just I, a closet full of them that are like, oh no, I can't, I can't wear that. It's got this, uh, you know. Yeah, even me, just having yeah. a t-shirt going about daily life, you spill things on it. Oh, but in a in kitchen... Korea with red everywhere, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. You look super cool in those. Do, do we call them? Is, is it got a name? A chef like, coat, just a chef coat. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've learned a new bit of vocab today. Do you never wear, like, what some chefs have, like a hat or something? Uh, I'm not a big fan of wearing <laughs> that, but you're really supposed to. So. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've even I've even had the cowboy hat in the kitchen. That's kind of ridiculous. Oh, but, nice. Is but, that um, also for, like, hygiene regions absolutely. of hair not falling I, you out? You know, it is, a, it is a rule or a oh. law in Korea. You have to cover your head if you're <gasps> in the kitchen. I did not know a that. A lot of places all. don't observe it, but if they get caught, they can get a fine or a, a penalty. Yeah. I think I've rarely seen people in the kitchen wearing a hat, actually, totally. at many totally. places that I frequent. I'll sport the bandana sometimes, oh. or, or you can kind of, if you just kind of half cover the front, I think you can get away with that. A lot nice. of folks do that, too. So yeah. there's no specific type of hat that you have to wear, just a covering of the head kind I of I suppose thing. so. There's probably there's probably some gray area in there, yeah. usually. Is. I'm thinking, just for a bit of humor, maybe a swimming cap or something <laughs> like that in Ball the kitchen. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's funny, even if you shave your head, technically you're supposed to have something up there. Oh, wow. That's not fair, right? Yeah, or if you're bold or yeah, something right? like that. Yeah, that makes sense. That doesn't make any yeah. sense. Uh, Siska's mm. on board showing Chef Ryan like wearing the black jacket on the elimination test on the Master Chef show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You look like you're going to be mean, like Gordon Ramsay or something like that. Uh, we've also got uh, Marilyn Wells saying, Chef Ryan, so happy to see you. Look forward to your yeah. dish today. I'm actually having lunch with Chef Utak from the K Festival we had last weekend oh, to beautiful. celebrate my 38th wedding anniversary. Wow, <gasps> happy anniversary. Oh, that's unbelievable. And you said that the chef himself did some amazing things with octopus at the festival oh, demonstration. Cool. cool. It's tricky. It's tricky. Take some practice. Yeah, to get the texture not too chewy, right? Oh, totally, yeah. Because yeah. in Korea, we have that sukhe from octopus, right? Mm. Which isn't really like hair as in raw fish, right? It's been boiled no, or no, something like that. No, no, it's been like steamed, yeah. 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 And then they cut it into those thin slices. When it's done right, with a bit of seaweed and oh, some other things. so good, right? It's brilliant. I want yeah. that now. Suddenly, <laughs> I'm yeah. craving it. Uh, today's dish, today's ingredient, I suppose. I gave the hint that... You can find this in the sea at the bottom of the sea as yeah. well. Is that yeah. correct? Well, not in the depths. Okay. I don't think it lives that far <laughs> deep. You can catch them from the shore. Oh, wow. So let, let's go ahead and throw this picture up there so everybody gets it. Okay. Um, if that's all right. We'll uh, put the picture up once uh, we can get that onto the screen. Yep. But here we go. This is, I'm excited about this one because this is one of my favorites. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it's so good, right? I did not know, if you put this picture in front of me when I was in the UK, I would not know what to call that, to be honest. Oh, really? Because you guys you guys don't have halibut over there? Or? Like, you find that on restaurant menus. Okay. The flat fish that I, well, I think it's flat. Sole? Place? Place. I don't yeah, know. That's oh. what we call it. Um, yeah. Maybe it's Different like species. Sole. Yeah. yeah. And it looks similar. 
colour but different, and so I yeah, wouldn't more know fins. exactly what this is. Yeah. Well, th- what we're talking about today, uh, the the main focus is guango, mm-hmm. which uh, is often called olive flounder. Oh. Uh, it has another name, but I'm not sure if I should read this on the air. <laughs> well, if it's a technical name, I think it's okay. Uh, maybe you should read it. I don't B- know. Halibut, let's call yeah. it, with an arstard after yeah, it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I, when I saw that, I was, just, I just laughed out loud. I was like, "Why did this halibut get that that name? What, so what did it do a, wrong? Is it different to like a regular halibut then?" Well, there's so many different kinds of Uh, these flat fish around the world. Here in Korea, I guess we have two or three at least, Mm -hmm. because there's the kajami, um, which is a smaller flat fish. Uh, There's also the totori. Oh. Which is the olive flounder, but it's spotted. I see. And it's, it's more seasonal. Okay. And when you see those, you know that they're more wild caught. Uh, whereas a lot of these are farm raised in Korea. The one on the um, screen, this just the regular quangol. Right. Okay. It, it's a it's a really good one for farming, apparently, because they they can put on a lot of weight pretty fast. Uh. Um, years ago, doing the documentary thing with Adidang. Yeah. I, man, I made a good friend, uh, <laughs> a, a fishing farmer. A, a, a fish farmer in Jeju-do um, and, and visited his farm and ate so much of this. And that's when I really fell in love with it because oh, we're nice. taking them straight out of his tanks yeah. that are fed by Jeju seawater. Oh, nice. Um, so it's like they're in the sea, right? Yeah. Uh, they pump in seawater and pump it back out. And uh, and when he would fillet up, and because here it's all about the raw fish. Sure. Right? Um, mostly anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, that, I just really fell in love with this fish. Marilyn is saying it, and the mm-hmm. other day I had this with my son. We went to Noryangjin Market and picked one out of the tank and had it, and yeah. I thought the same thing that Marilyn's saying. It is a whopper. You don't get them that big here in New Zealand. We prefer the smaller flounder. Okay. That is so cool. I've got to show it to my mum. And that's what I thought at Noryangjin. The guy got out a massive one from the tank, and it was for broadcasting, so they paid for it, so we had the big one. Beautiful. <laughs> and I was like, that is huge. If I saw that in the sea, I might be a bit worried. Score. <laughs> Yes. man yeah yeah they get up to like 20 something pounds wow. you know uh like around 10 kilos i've seen some big ones yeah. and then other species of halibut or flounder get way bigger than that even oh i see but boy i mean what are you gonna if you're eating them fresh raw mm-hmm. goodness i mean you buy because no, traditionally in korea you buy the whole fish you yeah. go to the restaurant and yeah. pick it out of the tank you know mm-hmm. or just tell them you want one out of the tank yeah and you're buying that whole fish you're not going to split it with somebody else no and so if you had one that was much bigger than like <laughs> i don't know like two or three kilos that's a lot of food man. it is yeah, yeah. you've got to share that with some other people maybe at the restaurant uh not a common thing to do of course oh, but we had it. so much left over you myself. must have if I you felt had the guilty. big one and just yeah. oh why didn't you call me man i would have <laughs> Rushed up to Noryangjin and hung out with you guys. I could have just like photo bombed yeah. you guys or something. That would have been fun. These flat fish, though, like if you look at them, I always thought when I was young, they do look like they've just been squashed, like they've yeah. been put through a pasta like machine where you're yeah. flattening them. Isn't that bizarre? Like they, when they're born, they swim like this. Oh, really? Yeah, and like then, a normal fish. Yeah, do and they then look like over a time, fish? yeah, what? and then over time they go. And switch to flat, and their appearance kind of changes as well. Totally, to that. They, they're they're like they're like mute. They morph. They completely morph. I thought they must have been born like this. No, sir. But they just look like regular fish and then change. When they're real little, they look like regular old fish. And wow. then the eye on one side moves and the head li- goes over. What? Which makes it so interesting, too. All right. So when, when it makes it so interesting. Usually, okay, when we talk about salmon, we talk about the salmon belly, right? Because uh-huh. that's where the fatty bits are. Or tuna. We talk about the tuna belly yes. is the highly priced because of those fatty bits. Well, where is the belly? on a flatfish. Where is the belly? Is well, it underneath? It's, it's actually on both sides. It's oh. on the edges. The, even the belly morphs into... It's so bizarre, man. <laughs> and when you when you go... Like a lot of fish, like a salmon, for example, if I buy a seven kilo salmon, mm. the actual like meat, no bone, no head, no uh, no nejang or the, yeah. the stomach, the intestines and everything. Mm-hmm. When, once you take all that away in the skin, you're maybe lucky to have four kilos okay. of filet. All right. All right. But this is, you get a lot more. There's a lot less like insides, uh-huh. I suppose. 
there is quite a bit of bone, um, but uh, but you get you get a lot of food out of this. You get a lot of flesh, right? Yeah. Once yeah, they yeah. take off the skin and they show you, like I've seen the process, you can watch them cutting it, right? When they take it out of the tanks, it's yeah. There's not a lot of goo and like inside, right? Is there it's any? just right towards the front. Oh, yeah. I see. And there's four fillets. You get two on the top mm-hmm. and then two smaller fillets on the bottom. Oh, even on the bottom. Yeah. I didn't so that. it's it's really, but they're not they're not fattier. Uh-huh. It's just the size that are fatty and we'll talk we'll talk more about those side pieces because it is my favorite it's so good i now realize why you know a lot of the older generation they love those side bits the Uh, most and i thought "Mm, not really great but if they're the fatty bits then of course they're going to be delicious uh, aren't they oh well it's not for everybody i got plenty of korean friends or or just friends in general that that don't love the jin ramisal or the skirt we call it the sides the belly uh, but man, if you get it really good and fresh, it kind of pops. Oh. And then there's a different oil and good fish oils, you know, good wow. for you. But it's just so delicious. Oh I, my goodness. I, I love the fatty parts of salmon and tuna, but I didn't realize it was the fact. Now my perception has changed. Maybe I'll like it. It's much leaner like it. than that of salmon okay. or something. But but still, you can just get this little extra bite of oil. It's, oh. Um, oh. Welcome to Arirang Radio. If you are in Jeju, 88.7 in Jeju City, 88.1 in Seogipu City, 101.9 in the Daejeong area. Lots of messages from our listeners talking about <laughs> flounders. And yeah, in Western culture, the most famous flounder must be Ariel's best friend, the blue and yellow flounder. But that's not. But an he's actual... upright. He's not a flounder. That right? doesn't make any sense. Why is he called flounder? Yeah. Boy, that's. Oh man, we've got a conspiracy on our hands. That what is, is weird, on? isn't it? So Miss Bradica and Sherry Russell both saying that looks nothing like the blue and yellow <laughs> friend. Yep, it is not an never actual flounder. Never seen a blue and yellow flounder, but no. you never know. I there you know. go, Mary. Uh, <laughs> says we have sand flounder i don't believe uh you can get them anywhere else in the world oh cool uh holy crap monsters what are they feeding on and where are they found these flounder are usually um well you know they're perfect for hiding in the sand Mm -hmm. so years ago i was out on the west coast yeah just trying my luck at fishing you Uh know and and managed to pull out a nice size flounder just from the coast yeah yeah yeah, just casting from the beach you know what are you putting on the end of that uh like, it's kind of i think it's like a sandworm okay yeah yeah it's kind of a scary looking little worm <laughs> um but uh then these folks these these older folks on like a bus tour up on the road above the beach yeah they were all shouting like oh you you got a lot of you can sell that for a lot of money and i was like i'm gonna eat it <laughs> yes uh, wow uh do, do many koreans do that because i see them sometimes fishing some older like i just she's uh-huh. from just the side of the beach or the kind of pier area do they take it out and eat it a lot of the time oh absolutely man. okay yeah nice. yeah sure Good sure, sure. probably where usually raw well, that's totally um, fine to do right yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Why, why wouldn't it be, man? I don't know, because in the UK, you would rarely yeah. take it out and eat it. You well, just lakes, put it back. lakes yeah. across America, you know, there's limits on what you're supposed to oh, eat per really? year I because see. of levels of things that could be harmful mm. to you. So. We've also got Silver Granny saying, I thought that flounder had their eyes on the same side of their body. And that's the case when they're adults, right? Their yes. eyes kind of migrate into that skewed it area. It is so cool. But yeah, they turn flat and the eye moves to the top and then they can lay on the sand and hide. Wow. Yeah. Evolution for you. Raul says, I don't know that fish. Uh, originally from Europe, that kind is not found here. Wow. Well, lo siento mucho, Raul. Uh, you got to try this one. I'm so sorry, man. Um, I hope you get a chance to, to taste some flounder someday. Yeah, there must be some kind of flat fish in that part of the world. Yeah, I never think? saw any when I was living down in, in Brazil. Oh, really? Uh, and I come to think of it, Mexico. Too. Yeah, because well, I know these here, they do like that colder water. Maybe, maybe uh, that's part of it. Yeah. Could be. Uh, Siska says, oh, flounder fish. In Indo Indonesia, they call it ikan sebel. Well, then that's warmer water that they've uh-huh. got it. Ikan sebela. Uh, good when it's grilled with Indo spices, also in a porridge. Yum, wow. yum, yum. Yes, yeah, it's because yeah. you can mix, mix the fish meat in a porridge. I don't yeah. 
Do we have a porridge here that has fish in it? No, I don't think so. No. But we do have some other dishes. Because I know not all of you guys are into raw fish. Mm. And really, to enjoy this one raw, you want it, you want it Korean style. You want straight it straight away, straight out of the tank. Yeah. You know. Um, but we have some other recipes we're going to run run through with you guys today. Okay. Um, if you if you would rather cook your fish, yeah, yeah it's yeah. totally fine to do. I've had it a few times cooked, but yeah, the vast majority of times, if you're eating kwangho, you're getting it like this. We'll show you the photo on the video yeah, stream. Yeah. So, Can we zoom in? Can we get closer on that? Look? It yeah. looks really meaty. Yum. Wow. Yeah, when we went to Nurangjin, what they love to do is they'll take it out and they'll show you how like healthy and alive it is before yeah. killing it dead yep. and then giving it to you, yep. right? <laughs> yep. Yep, it's dispatched pretty quickly. Uh, you know? And folks say that fish don't have feelings, right? I don't know. I'm not a fish, <laughs> but... Uh, I'd, I'd like to think they don't because right. the way we eat it. Right. Did you... Were you in Korea many years ago? It must have been 2004 for me. Oh, not that long back, but okay. Some places, and it was in Jeju where I saw this and was slightly disturbed, they just took off the top layer of skin and served you the fish still like with its mouth open and closing, open and closing, oh, yeah. and you just took out the flesh and ate it like that. I haven't seen that in Korea, but okay. I've definitely seen it in, in China, Hong okay. Kong, Taiwan. Yeah. yeah, to kind of show you this is how fresh it is. Oh, man, I, it freaked me out. Yeah. The first time I saw I was in Hong Kong, and I was walking through a fish market, mm -hmm. and they had the fish cut down the middle, mm -hmm. like bone, head, everything, just cut right down the middle to show that its heart was still beating. Oh, wow, you could see that. Yeah, yeah, so that you know that this fish is, is so fresh. Wow. And, I mean, you can't, you can't really fake that. I mean, it would take some <laughs> expensive special effects. It wouldn't be worth it. Yeah. So that is pretty proof that you're buying quality yeah i think so. in korea now that's died out i think people were like oh, i don't want to see that on my dinner plate Less actually common here for sure yeah yeah even though like we had a couple of weeks ago you still have the prawns alive you know and then taking off the heads oh, and stuff true, like very that true and the octopus and yeah, yeah abalone those things maybe, crabs maybe the fish is yeah. just too big and looks too much like a live pet almost i, I guess suppose. i guess so i guess so but look at this picture though uh -huh. okay you see um, on top the like more wrinkly or squiggly looking yeah. pieces there. That is the amazing jinrami sal or so the you, skirt. You get less of that than the main flesh. Right? Oh, totally. You, those are the prize pieces. Uh -huh. If you go to like um, a kind of like a sushi place, but here in Korea, they'll have a different name for this. Mm. Um, I always call it by the Korean name. Sometimes you know they use the Japanese name uh -huh. as well here, but uh, it, it costs maybe fifty percent more or, or more than if that. If you're just getting that part, if you're getting that piece, oh, wow. and the pieces may be smaller, but uh, uh, see, it's next to those fins, mm. so the flesh is different. You get this lovely pop, pop, pop texture, mm. and then that oil. And if you get a chance, <sighs> if you're at a sushi restaurant, ask them about the sides or the belly or the skirt mm. of the flounder. Oh, that's because a tip. it's a special little treat. Yeah, yeah, because the other part. For for me, to be honest, compared to the Japanese style of sushi, you know, which been maybe fermented or set aside for a couple of days, I was mm, like, there's not too yeah. much flavor going on here right. when I first had it. Right, and there's no texture. I mean, yeah. well, it's just a really mushy, soft texture. Yeah. But here it's got that springiness because the fish is still in rigor. Mm. Um, oh. not, not a very appetizing <laughs> word to use, but, but that's the fact of the matter. I mean, it, it has just been um, taken out of the live tank and mm. cut up for you, so it's it's got that jolgi jolgi. It's got that chewiness to it. Yeah, I, I didn't love this for the longest time, but now I do love having it with the samjang. Yep. That's my thing, because you yep. can see in that picture just before, there was the wasabi, and you mm -hmm. can have it with the soy sauce, like Japanese kind of styly. But yeah. a lot of Koreans will have it with that, or the chojang as well. Right, and if you can't find uh, samjang in your area, you could probably still find gochujang at least, mm -hmm. and then just add some garlic, add some chopped chilies, add some toasted sesame oil, and you've got a lovely, lovely um, thing to use with, with raw fish and a lot of other things. And that is, like I think, pretty much hands down the most most common raw fish to have here, right? It must be, yeah. right? Yeah, because like, it's a middle price, mm -hmm. you know? It's not It's not like the herring or the the, 
the something shad, the oh, chono the gizzard shad. Gizzard yes. shad. <laughs> um, it's not those are those are a bit cheaper, you know, and more seasonal. Mm -hmm. The flounder is uh, has a really long season. Now is considered the real best season for it. Oh, but I it see. has a really really long season. So, uh -huh. um, and then they're they're farm raised so much here. So. Um, it pro that because of that, yeah, because yeah. I think the other one, the ones that you mentioned, the cheaper ones, when they're in season, they are popular. But the other one that I hear like all year round, slightly less common, I say, is udok, which I'm not exactly the sure. The rockfish. Oh, yeah. oh, wow, yeah, that sounds yeah. very similar. <laughs> udok yeah, and, and the rock. Yeah, yeah, that that one is more a little more expensive though. Usually, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's why it's a bit less common. And a similar eaten. flesh, like I, mm. I would be hard pressed to tell. Yeah. Tell them apart if it was just the cut up pieces. Yeah. By taste, I could probably do it. Uh, uh, yeah. On the outside of the fish, I mean, we're talking the rockfish or the udok is, is usually black. Mm -hmm. I think there are some different colors of them, but sure. they're usually black. It's and not when, flat fish, right? When, yeah. No, 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 no. And when uh, when we were fishing in Jeju a long time ago with my mom and dad, uh, hey guys, <laughs> we we, uh, we caught at least one of them. And when that came up, because we're yeah. catching tons of these little red fish okay. and all this other stuff, but when that one came up. The boat captain was like, yeah, you the you know, you're rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Are you ready? Every day is K-pop. Listen up. Anytime and everywhere. Radio. Arirang Radio. We're back for part three, Dish of the Day, with Chef Ryan talking about the uh, olive flounder, the quango, in season, peak season, we should say now. I, I don't think I ever not see it in the tanks, like outside True. some of those seafood restaurants. True, right? yeah, because it's so farmed here, yeah. Uh -huh. um, and I, and they're, they're great. They're yeah. just so good. They're always being being eaten everywhere. we got Siska saying in Indonesia, the flounder can be spicy or less spicy mm -hmm. when it's grilled. And uh, we also call it ikan sebella because it's so flat. And we usually only eat the meat on one side. Yeah, oh. I, I didn't even know that it's on the bottom. Is is it much like oh, thinner maybe there? Maybe they only eat the top fillets because there could be parasites in the bottom. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, little little sea worms mm. in there. It's possible, uh, but you can always see those things pretty well. So oh. don't don't be scared if okay. you happen to go fishing and catch one. You'll be able to see it. Okay. You're not gonna, you're not going to give yourself parasites, I okay. promise. Uh, Marilyn says, raw fish with flounder, never tried it. Fresh snapper raw fish, yummy. Wow, the flounder has lots of meat. Yes, it does. Four fillets. Um, you know, the, the cool, one of the first ways that I really started playing with with flounder any mm. flatfish, okay, yeah. any flatfish you can find, is to stuff it like Cajun style. Oh. Oh, man. Into the fillet. So... Okay, yeah, Marilyn's asking, are there a lot of bones? And and yes and no. Let me tell you a little a little trick. This is fun. If you go if you go on my Instagram, you can find uh, a video of me doing this to a huge flounder. What's your um, Instagram handle again? Uh, it's just my name with underscore between it's Ryan Wesley Phillips with okay. little underscores between. Um, and and so okay, the fish is flat, and you'll see this line that goes down the top of the fish, right? Put your knife in there, fillet knife, really sharp. Oh, right? there's a natural line on it. There's a natural line, oh. like a like a like a peak. Okay. Just a and and cut down in and go. You'll hit bone and then go to the left and stay along the backbone, okay. along all those bones, and then go to the right and stay along. And you'll be able to open the fish up. Oh. All right. Okay. Um, and that's there's no intestines on the top or anything. It's just just fillet. Skin's still on and everything. S yeah, you leave the skin on. Okay. Then, uh, oh, you should scale it probably first, but okay. there's just little bitty scales. They're pretty easy to deal with. Uh -huh. uh, and your fishmonger will usually do that for you, Okay, at least here. Um, and then, this is a little trickier, but you slide the knife under the bone, okay. but above the fillet. Okay. You know, towards the middle, mm -hmm. and then go out to the side, oh. and then do it again on the other side. So this is the bottom, the like bottom meat. part. Okay. And then take a pair of kitchen scissors and cut the middle part. Uh huh. <laughs> and then you can take, all right, and then scissors down the sides. Yeah. And you can take all the bones out. It just comes out as one kind of thing. It's so cool. Oh wow. And now you've got a pocket. 
you can、oh, fold the top、I、back、see. on, and you can stuff it with all kinds of lovely things, like a, like a holy trinity sauteed with garlic and parsley and a little、uh, smoked paprika.、Wow. Get some breadcrumbs in there. Get maybe a little homemade mayonnaise, a tiny bit of mustard. Maybe、that、some some、good. chilies. Stuff all that in there, and then bake that sucker. And oh, get some butter and lemon on top. That's and, not common at all to do in Korea, right? I don't think I've ever boy, seen a kwangmo like that. In the South, you know, you get anywhere around Louisiana,、um, you can find some delicious <sighs> stuffed flounder. I why I want that in Korea. I want you to do that on your farm one time. When, Is that how you did it, Ryan? On I've your Instagram, I've done that many times for、wow. folks. And actually, we did it on the show. If you guys watch the old audio. On K Fish、wow. show, we did it on there for for my friends, the fish farmer and friends.、Oh, he and his、nice. wife did they like it? They loved it, but <laughs>、uh, you know they're real keen on on their ways of doing it.、Uh, but they but they did comment that it was very nice. So that's how、it. you could do it in a not traditional Korean way. What are some、yes. of the cooked ways that we're going to show? We got a photo. Way to get、here. us back on track, Peter.、Okay. Yeah. <laughs>、um, so fish cakes. Oh.、All right? And and you know even if you don't have flounder, Raúl,、yeah. uh, podría hacer eso con con un otro tipo de pescado. You could do this with a different kind of fish、uh-huh. that is a white fish. Oh, okay. okay. That's the only、um, requirement is that、okay. it's, it's done with a white fish. And we also usually add. Oh, check this out. You could throw all this in a blender.、Uh-huh. So this is so easy.、Good. All right.、Uh, follow with me, and I'll help you out. All right. So you you get some white fish. Maybe let's say let's say. If we did 200 grams of white fish,、mm-hmm. then you might get a hundred grams of say squid. Oh, all right. Yeah.、Uh, maybe a hundred grams of、uh, shrimp、oh, to、nice. give that springy texture. Right. The、uh-huh. squid and the shrimp will help give it a little spring texture to it. If you just use the white fish, it'll be a little bit mushy. Okay. You know? Um, you guys can see in the picture right now that it's that it's fried and it's crispy on the outsides, and then it's going to be soft and springy on the inside. Oh, nice!、Um, now, how are we going to get it to hold together with a little bit of flour? If you've got 200 grams of whitefish, 100 grams of、uh, squid, and 100 grams of shrimp,、mm. then you're probably going to go with maybe 100 to 150 grams of white flour, okay? Like all-purpose flour is、mm-hmm. fine. Then here in Korea, you know, we sweeten just about everything, so you might get a little bit of sugar. In there,、uh, definitely some salt. You know, get a little soy.、Uh, we'll, we'll often add garlic.、Uh, herbs can go in there as well. Now, but here's the here's the real trick when you make this.、Uh-huh. You want to put it after you put all this in the blender,、yeah. and it's totally you、like、know,、paste. yeah,、okay. yeah, smooth.、Um, you're gonna spread it onto a spatula, and then you're gonna. Roll it off of that spatula、oh. into these into these little shapes that you see here. Oh, nice! Straight into the hot oil. So、oh. please be careful, everyone. I've got、okay. some new burns. Oh dear! From、uh, last week, it happens all the time.、Uh-huh. Please be safe.、Um, but you're going to deep fry these and make sure your oil is not too hot because you want it to cook all the way to the center before、okay. it gets real dark brown on the outside. But、uh, these、Just、are a couple of minutes in that. Well, let's say if you had your oil at one sixty-five,、uh-huh. uh, then and you don't make them too big, about the size of、uh, like two fingers or something like that,、uh-huh. then、um, yeah, three to four minutes、okay. should do it. Oh wow,、yeah. that looks amazing! Because in England, the fish cakes that I remember having, especially like crab cakes as well, I think they'd be like pan fried on either、right. side usually. And you could do that here if you want to shallow fry them. You can roll them around. No, but that、um, looks way better. I'm gonna、oh, try that.、Oh. And then would you dip that in any kind of sauce? Yeah, often.、Uh, well, what do, what do we do here? We put it actually in soups, right?、Yeah. We throw them into a soup,、That's、into a, it, a、right? broth. Yeah. yeah, and then、usually、maybe you got soy sauce and wasabi or kaja to dip them into. When taking them out of the soup, right? Very、If、true. That's nice. And I, and I know these kind of things exist in other parts of the world. This is more the Korean style, and and it's so easy to do. Just throw it all in the blender. I've never even thought of making homemade omuk fish cakes because they're so cheap and tasty in the supermarket. But that's a nice way if you've got some kwangol flounder. Just quickly, can we get onto this because it looks oh, amazing? Oh yeah. Again, I've not seen this. Yeah. Often in Korea, so this is actually more often done with the smaller variety of flounder here, the kajami,、uh-huh. um, uh, rather than the big ones we were showing pictures of earlier. Okay, but、uh, but so if you just they're cutting all the way through the fish,、mm. okay, taking well the skins often left on too,、okay. so scaled, cutting all the way through the bone. 
and, and then just dusting it with cornstarch. So the right? bone's still in there? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, not always. These days, people are doing more and more fillets. Mm-hmm. But traditionally, uh, in this picture, um, it's, it's got the backbone and, the, and, the, and all the, the hair comb, you know, yeah. from the old cartoons. <laughs> uh, so they're dusted in flour and then uh, shallow fried or deep fried. And or not flour, I'm sorry, cornstarch to get them really, really crispy, uh-huh. right? And then the then after that, you're gonna toss them in a sauce. So if you're making this at home, you want to make the sauce first uh-huh. and have it hot and ready. Okay. So when the fish come out of the fry, you get them right into the sauce and toss oh, them. Okay. And and have you had this before? Do you know what goes into the sauce? I've had this for gotcha me. I. I don't know, many of the Korean ingredients, I'm assuming, soy sauce. Right, definitely some soy, some chili flakes. You can see the sesame seeds, sesame Uh oil, um, garlic. But what's really important in this, Mm -hmm. and not one of my favorite ingredients, rice syrup or just (laughs) lots of sugar. (laughs) To make it nice and sweet. It gets so shiny (laughs) and it's sweet. And this is is a dish that, you know... I, I don't do it a whole lot, but it is so good. Mm. It's like fish candy yeah. when it's done. <laughs> um, and, and it's often done with other types of fish here, too. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's the that's the kajami twigim. The way the I've had that more is maybe they my mother-in-law does it especially. Not a deep fry, but they might just put the fish into that sauce and, and just fry it. In the sauce. Oh, right. right. I've seen it that way like with, whole uh, as well. with the pollock uh-huh. as well, too. Yeah. Even the half-dried pollock done that way. Mm, it's yeah. delicious as well with yeah. some rice. Perfect. Oh, it's making me hungry. I'm getting too involved. <laughs> too involved. We've got something for everyone today. I hope for our raw fish non-fans as well. Ryan, thank you so much. I want to have some raw. Have uh-huh. a lovely weekend, Peter. You too. We'll see you next Friday. You can listen to Dish of the Day with Chef Ryan every Friday at 10am KST on Hashtag Daily Cake.